Shalom everybody, welcome back. Um, we're now towards the actual end of the year, Parashat Nitzavim Vayalech, leading into Rosh Hashanah. So some insights in this stage, in perspective, using Rabbi Nachman's teachings, in particular, Likutei Moran Lesson 24. In Lesson 24, just a quick summary, and then we can apply to the summary of the ideas, is that Rabbi Nachman teaches that where a Jew is at the present moment, wherever he's trapped, wherever he's low, wherever he's far, wherever he is in in whatever in whatever scenario he's stuck in, he can get out by stopping, making a stand, and working on being joyous, on fighting to be b'simcha, and to doing the mitzvot to b'simcha. And with this simcha that he works on, using any tactic available, especially the famous five that Rabbi Nachman talks about, or Rabbi Nachman elaborates on, which are, number one, telling jokes, acting silly. Number two, clapping hands, dancing, putting on music. Number three, finding the good points, azamra. Number four, giving thanks to Hashem for all the good and recognizing it and thanking Him for that. And number five, looking how in the end everything will work out in life. And if everything's going to work out in the end, so you have nothing to worry about. You know that in the end it's going to be good and you don't have to fret and worry about losing out because in the end you're just going to gain. If you force being with Simcha using these techniques, so the Simcha activated eventually brushes off on you doing mitzvot with Simcha. And when the mitzvot are done with Simcha, the mitzvah, which is connected to you and connected to Hashem, is released from whatever darkness and impurity that you feel you're stuck in, from doing from there a mitzvah with joy, the mitzvah is released, so to speak, releasing you also, and it gains momentum to go up and up and up and up levels in the Kabbalah called the levels of the hands, then the level of the mind, and then that which is beyond the mind, which is emuna, And by joining the emuna faith, to the mind, the person activates the Keter, and the Keter, which is the interface between us and Hashem's light, Hashem's infinite light, Hashem's essence, so to speak, okay, the Keter then, to prepare a person for this amazing experience, the Keter pushes the person back, and depending on how the person takes the pushback, the setback, if he takes it in a positive perspective, in a positive view, and doesn't look at it as just a down and just being pushed back, but as a stepping stone for the next level, so then he's able to create vessels that within them he perceives infinite light. Infinite light, and infinite light denotes clarity. And the clarity brushes off into a person, showing him what to do in life. And this clarity showing him what to do pushes him to go up even f- higher and activating what's called Simcha Yetera, more joy. And this process of, of going up and then being bounced back is repeated. Every time you connect to the Keter, you're bounced back. So it's like a cycle. But every time you gain, you gain more perspective in life. You gain more understanding of what Hashem wants of you. You gain more depth in Hashem's existence in your life. Okay? This is needed for everybody. Because the main, main reason, Rav Nosen writes this a few times, the main reason why people are facing challenges and being... Uh, purged if they want to say that funny word is in because a person has within his potential and he's expected to gain clarity and light shine light into his life into his challenges he's expected to do that not just to run away and just to put a patch on and that's it but he rather he's expected to this uncover the treasure hidden within and beyond the challenge so because of that person is set with all these obstacles and setbacks and attacks from the evil side in order to push him to gain clarity so a person's main two weapons in this lesson this idea is simcha and light in infinite light okay Rav Nossin shows it's all connected in one verse a verse from uh, from from i think isaiah the simchat olam al rosham and the joy what the the joy that's all of this world al rosham 
is on their heads, which is the crown. So Rav Nosson explains that through the simcha of this world, by being challenged and purged in this world, a person maintains to try to develop a happy attitude in life. So through that, he merits al Rosham to the Keter, where the Keter is the access, the gateway to the infinite light. And this infinite light shines clarity to a person. So he has the clarity that he needs in order to get out. So with this in mind, let's take a look at these events happening these, these days, these holy days in the next week, next two weeks. Let's take a look. Litzavim vayelech. Litzavim, making a stand. Litzavim translates as standing. Okay? In fact, Rashi says in the parsha, he brings a few things, Rashi. But one of the things he says is that the Jewish people, they saw all the curses in last week's parsha, parsha Kitavo. 98 curses. And they said, who can stand up to this? And then, and like, all these curses, these terrible things, eating the children, eating your your sons and daughters, you know, crazy stuff, crazy, terrible tortures. So they said to Moshe Rabbeinu, who can stand up to this now? If we just fall a little, we're, we're, we're doomed. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, but look, this is what keeps you standing. You see that after all the things you got Hashem angered, His compassion overruled, and He didn't punish you like you should have been punished technically for past misdeeds. You're standing. In other words, the suffering or the fear of punishment is what has made you stand. You're not, you haven't fallen. In other words, the feeling of, oh my God, what, what's going to be with me? What am I going to do? And trying to figure out a solution to get out of the, the, the darkness, to get out of the, of, the, of the danger of being punished, that itself helps a person to come out. So Moshe Rabbeinu is saying, you're standing, nitzavim. So in our context, that whatever person is going through, any fear, any panic, any, oh my God, it's over, I'm finished, I'm not going to make it in life, it's just too much, it's, I'm just overwhelmed by the, by the challenges of life and the etzara, and I keep on falling and keep on falling, where a person makes a stand, nitzavim, he makes a stand, he says, I'm not going to let this continue, this cannot continue, I have to make a change, I have to make a choice and a change in my life, and I choose to work on being bisimcha. So nitzavim is standing to make a choice. So when the simcha is activated, and it goes into the person's mitzvah performance, whereas until now, he was davening like heavy and drained and not concentrating and out of it, all of a sudden he's davening with such a positivity and, and an amazing connection to God and feeling that connection and the, the joy leading to the yearning behind the davening. So he's now full of simcha, okay? So now the mitzvahs that he does has, mom, has momentum, has movement. That's vayelech. Vayelech, walking, momentum. That now through nitzavim, through making a, a stand, stopping the, the domino effect of sadness and depression and worry, etc. and all that, stopping it, stopping the, move, the, the momentum of that negativity, a person then causes vayelech. Now he's walking. The mitzvah, the light of the mitzvah, thanks to the joy that he, did, that he used in making the mitzvah, allows him to go forward now. So what's after Nitzavim Vayalech? Rosh Hashanah. And like Rabbi Nachman says in this lesson, that by letting the mitzvah walk and allowing you and the whole world to gain momentum, you eventually reach what's called the head. You reach the Chach, the Chochma Bin Adat. He says there in Lesson 24, to be more specific, that you activate blessing. When there's momentum, it activates the hands which correspond to blessing. But the main blessing is that the hands be connected to the head. The blessing of sechel, of intellect. That's the idea of Rosh Hashanah, Rosh. So we connect now, through Nitzami Bailech, to the beginning of the year, which is the concept of the head. We end the year, Nitzami Bailech, with a positive attitude of Simcha, and we're not going to fall into worry from all the rebukes in the book of Dvarim, in particular Parashat Kitavo. We're not going to be down and negative and, and, and schleppy now and groupy and whatever it's called. We're not going to now fall that way. We're going to rather now use our positivity to get out. Okay? So Nitzavim Bayelech leads us to Rosh of Rosh Hashanah, the head. Now you connect to the head, the intellect, the blessing of the intellect. And the goal of the blessing of the intellect is to connect to that which is beyond the intellect, which is the Keter, the infinite light hiding behind the Keter. So Shana means a few things. Hashana means the year, but also means Shana, sleep. And also is rooted to the word Meshune, different. That once you connect to Rosh Hashanah, the Rosh of the Rosh Hashanah, the head, so now you access that which is beyond you. And beyond the person 
is called sleep mode. Because it's so way above his intellect, he has no grasp. So it's like he's sleeping. It's considered like a sleep mode because I have no access to it. What do you want from me? Okay? And also, it's the year. It's a new year. Because the year has all these changes and we don't know exactly what's, what's waiting for us. So it's a year ahead of us. And also, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, mishune. It's different, okay. And also, it's sorry, sorry. It's shena sleeping, and also it's mishune. It's different. I'm not used to this. I'm used to intellect and clarity and and something which is solid and square. That's my intellect. It's built on understanding things. And now I come across a level which is beyond my grasp. So that's the idea of rosh hashana. It's intellect, and yet it's sleeping, which is the opposite of the rosh. There's no intellect here because now. I'm accessing that which is beyond the intellect, which is called the Keter, okay? So there's a pushback. The pushback is reflected in the day right after Rosh Hashanah, Tzom Gedalia. What in the world? What's Tzom Gedalia? We're mourning over the death of a tzaddik, Gedalia ben Achikam, killed by Jews, you know? What a crazy thing. And right after Rosh Hashanah, you can't pick another day. Why right after Rosh Hashanah? To show you now that after reaching a certain high, Connecting to Rosh and the Shana, which is the idea of sleep mode, different mode, the new year mode, which I have no grasp of, okay? And it's pushing me back. The pushback begins with a fast day. And over what? Over death of the tzaddikim, who are the ones who are normally those who are responsible to shining my life with, with light and hope and direction. These are the ones who guide me how to be happy in life, what to be happy about. They teach us how to be happy, B'zat Hashem. And we're mourning over the death of such tzaddikim. Gedal Yahu, right? Gedal, which means growing. And the first three letters of Hashem's name, Yud, Kevav, Gedal Yahu. We say some Gedal Yahu, but his full name is Gedal Yahu. So in other words, these tzaddikim, they've mastered in enhancing the Yud, Kevav, the first three levels of Hashem's name. That's pretty deep in Kabbalah, we won't go into that. But the idea is that these tzaddikim are those who are mastering in revealing godliness in the world. They're gadol, they're big. And we're mourning the death. A tzaddik was murdered. In other words, that we're pushed back to such a, a, a sad situation, a painful one, but this still is part of the growth pro process because Rosh Hashanah and Tzom Gadaya are three days, part of the ten days of repentance leading up to Yom Kippur. So it's a fall, which is really preparing for the next, next high, which comes on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the tenth day of repentance, and it's a result of Rosh Hashanah. Because of Rosh Hashanah, such an amazing light, and then Shana, Shone, Shena, sleeping mode, and we don't know what's going to be, pushed back, Tzom Gedaya, and then we build back up, trying to build up on the ten days of repentance, where, like Rav Nosen writes, a person is tested more than any other time in the ten days of repentance. He writes in one place, Rav Nosen, in his prayers, Likutei Tfilot, part 2, prayer 5, that he says, Hashem, instead of doing tshuva in these 10 days of repentance, that's why they call 10 days of repentance, because you expect to do tshuva, he says, not only did I, I not do tshuva in these 10 days, but I even blemished even more. It's a big test at 10 days, but the test is to hold on. Because if you hold on, you get to Yom Kippur, where there's an atonement for even that which you did after Rosh Hashanah. You would expect it, okay, it's a new year, it's a new start, Brand new start, I'm going to be on a fresh start, and then boom. The year itself starts with a boom, and that we have Tzom Gedaya. It's not you, it's the year, and the Jewish nation as a whole, collectively, that we are forced to experience a down. And it's reflecting what I'm going through personally. So the, the, the 10 days of repentance anyways has a high, and then right after on the third day down, and my job is to hold on, hold on, to want to and yearn to reconnect Hashem, to Hashem. And that happens on Yom Kippur, where the actual Keter is revealed. On Rosh Hashanah, the Rosh is revealed, exposing us to the initial light, which is beyond sleep mode, different, the new year. And then we're pushed back. And then on Yom Kippur, it's on a more revealed level. This is why on Yom Kippur, we go through the, the service. On Musa, for example, we go through the service of the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. And we all, in the Musaf Davening, we illustrate and we imitate and we redo what was happening in the Beit HaMikdash when the Kohen Gadol would enter the Holy of Holies and when he would send the Holy Name, we, as you recall, we bow on the floor when reciting Hashem's name, Baruch Shem, and we say, Baruch Shem Kibbutz Machoto, we're reliving 
the Kohen Gadol entering the holiest level of the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy of Holies, which is the 10th level of holiness, like the Mishnah uh, lists out, that, that the holiest, highest level of holiness is the Holy of Holies in the Beit HaMikdash, and that in a sense corresponds to the Keter, which is the 10th Svira. So now with Yom Kippur, we reconnect to the Keter, which was just a foretaste on Rosh Hashanah, we now connect to it on a more deeper level, okay? And that leads to the Simcha now that we need for the entire year. And the Simcha we need for the entire year is done on Sukkot, the seven days of Sukkot, and then finally on Simcha Torah. We take the four species, which correspond to four levels, the four levels being the, the bottom of the feet, the legs, the arms, the brain, okay? We take all four levels and we dance with them and we sing with them. We do halal and we also cry out, Hashem save us because we're still not there. And on Hashanah Rabbah we cry even more but we say halal at the same time. And then finally we drop the lulav and etrog on Simchat Torah and we dance without the four. We dance ourselves with the actual Torah. Because now we've bypassed all the levels and we reached a type of revelation of the Torah. That's why we start the, the book of, of the Torah Bereshit is started on Simcha Torah because now we're showing our, Hashem, showing ourselves that our Simcha now is complete on condition that we connect to the Torah because the Torah will now be the means to shine us light through our joy. We have now a means for Hashem to give us guidance. When we're looking for guidance, where can we find it? In the Torah. So we're dancing leading up to Simcha Torah to show our Simcha, our joy, that leads us to have clarity. Torah is called Or, Torah O. Torah is from the Lashon of Horah, instruction, also has in it Torah Or, light. So this, in a nutshell, is what we're going through, and it starts with this Shabbat. They say in, in Hasidic Svarim and Kabbalistic Svarim that the Shabbat preceding a holiday has already a foretaste of that holiday. So which this means, this Shabbat, Nitzavim Ba'elech, is so powerful that it has the prerequisite beginning point to experience Rosh Hashanah, and Bezat Hashem, we should be zoche to have this light of Rosh Hashanah shine, and we should be positive this Shabbat, of Nitzavim, Vayalech, even with all the setbacks, I want to make a change. I'm going to stand, Nitzavim, and make a change, and then I can start walking forward, Bezat Hashem. Shana Tova, and Ketiva Vechatima Tova, we all, we all be inscribed, and sealed in the books of the true tzaddikim, which is one of the reasons why we try to travel to be by tzaddikim for Rosh Hashanah. So this process, this whole procedure, takes place not with just my input, because I know it's not enough. I need help. So the input of the true tzaddikim who have mastered these stages, that it can also brush on me, little me, that I too can partake of the Rosh, and then the Shana, and then the down that anyways I go through, but holding on to get to the light of Yom Kippur, and the Simcha of Sukkot, and ultimately the Simcha of the Torah, which will be the gateway for the entire year. Shana Tova.